So, not long ago, I am just desperate for inspiration. I mean, just feeling blue, and for no good reason. I mean, nobody's died. I mean, I, I don't have cancer. My identity has not been stolen. But, you know, it's just every day waking up and showering and eating breakfast and just kind of trudging through life because something's missing. And when you've lost that spark that says you're alive, how do you get it back? Well, I tried talking to my friends about it. You know, I, th I think I need new friends. Uh, <laughs> one's capable of uh, empathy. <laughs> Like, there's this, there's this radiologist that I work with, an uh, easygoing guy from Biloxi, Mississippi, with a, a triple chin. And uh, so I share my concern. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're a goddamn general surgeon. You save people's lives. No. This sounds like first world problems to me. <clears throat> Can we just look at the x-rays, please? All right, so number one, you need to learn how to talk faster. <laughs> and you look at the x-rays. I mean, is it really enough taking care of other people when you're not living life yourself? So I turn to self-help books, but, but that's not any better. Now, I just have this inanimate object sitting on the desk, you know, evaluating my inability to maintain a positive outlook on life. So what do I do? Because everything is just so blah. Well, then I think of something that my ex-girlfriend used to talk about, the law of attraction. Now, she didn't so much uh, enjoy other people. Uh, at least, uh, nothing I did ever seemed to make her happy. But she always lived life on the edge, and she always got what she wanted. So the law of attraction says thoughts become things. See, the world is a, is a catalog of anything you could possibly want. Just Admit to yourself what it is and ask. Now, it might not come exactly at the time you want or in the way you're expecting, but if you put it out there, like a genie in a bottle, the universe will provide. <laughs> that sounds pretty weird. But what do I have to lose? So I go to the website that she mentioned, and I, I put in my name and my email address and my date of birth, and then there's these two fill-in-the-blanks, right, about the future that I want for myself. So number one, I now have my own, and I put kind, intelligent, affectionate girlfriend, because I really want one. And number two, I will soon, and I put perform on stage as an artist, send. All right, so a little bit of backstory here. I've always had what I think you would call an adversarial relationship with my computer, uh, in that it often makes fun of me. So, like, you know those ads that pop up when you're online, right? So, okay, so, example, I'm online, and I'm going to update my fitness calendar. And before long, my computer recommends I try medication used to treat adults with moderately to severely active rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> or, you know, maybe I'm looking at a picture of my ex-girlfriend <clears throat> in the middle of the night, and it pops this question. <laughs> Feeling excessively lonely? <laughs> Women four times your age are waiting to talk to you right now. <laughs> so it was with quite a bit of surprise when I wake up Monday morning and there's an email waiting for me sent by the universe. <laughs> you know, Kirk, an affirmative thought is 100 times more powerful than a negative thought. I love these moments we share. The universe. <laughs> hey, that's, that's pretty encouraging. Tuesday. Let the goals you seek, Kirk, be self-made adventures. Self-made being the operative word, as you were, the universe. <laughs> wow, universe, I really respect your, your perspective on this. <clears throat> and then uh, on Wednesday, uh, let the, uh, you are the Michelangelo of your own life, Kirk, and you do it with your thoughts. <clears throat> we can do anything together. Heck yeah. I mean, before long, I'm feeling like the universe is my friend, my life coach. But here's when I know it for sure. So I'm on the elevator, and I'm feeling kind of lonely, but I'm recollecting these last words. <clears throat> the secret to always being at the right place at the right time, Kirk, is knowing you already are. Enjoy the ride, the universe. <laughs>
The elevator door opens and in walks the girl from fifth floor. She has a figure that makes an hourglass weep. I mean, she, like her eyes have this combination of confidence and beauty. It just totally disarms me. Plus, she totally knows how to accessorize. <laughs> so there's no way she's going to be interested in me. No, that's my knee-jerk reaction. But the charismatic voice of the universe resonates in my head, and then and there, I make a choice. I bet she is just as kind, intelligent, and affectionate as she is beautiful, so there's no reason she wouldn't want to love a man like me. So I say hi. And she smiles and says hello, and, and we, we talk all the way down to the lobby. We totally connect. See you later. Oh, she is hot. And I took a risk, and it paid off. And I feel good. I love you, universe. I would follow you anywhere. <laughs> so <clears throat> this continues. Uh, I, you know, putting putting uh, self-made adventures first, stronger stronger choices, taking risks. Like I always wanted to fly an airplane. So I study for and take and pass the FAA exam, and suddenly I'm in the sky. Or like I had said in the universe's website, I always wanted to have a chance to perform on stage. And two months ago, I walked up on this stage for the first time and presented the theme, Colossal Failure, which in retrospect, <laughs> I feel like uh, I had a pretty good handle on given my extensive past experience before I met the universe. Don't delay, Kirk. Don't second guess. When the instinct strikes, act immediately. These last words from my celestial mentor are resonating when, again, I encounter the girl from fifth floor on the elevator, and we're going up to our apartments. So as the elevator door is closing, I reach across, and I, I hit her floor to her button. Her button to her floor. <laughs> She makes me crazy. I, what can I say? She's beautiful. <laughs> and I think you know where we're actually where we're heading with this. I trip over the bag of groceries by my feet that I neglected to notice in my haste, and now I'm stumbling towards her, and as I'm grasping to catch my balance, I'm pushing her into the wall of the elevator with my body. And I jump back, though, unfazed, and I say, Go out with me! Startled <laughs> by the last five seconds of apparent insanity, she rapidly leaves the elevator, and by rapidly, I mean she lunges for the third floor button, which is not where a girl from fifth floor lives, <laughs> and she jets out with her grocery bag still dripping milk from the recent impact. And as the elevator's doors close, I think to myself, when the instinct hits, Act immediately? Too much, universe. <laughs> Too much. You know, thoughts become things. All you have to do is ask. But if the universe ever tries to tell me to do something again without even thinking about it, I'm going to take that suggestion with a little grain of salt. Thank you.